So now I want to tell you about some of the really bad and sad effects of the toxic chemical soup that we're living in. This is my sweet cat, Midnight. And a couple years ago, Midnight was a fat, happy cat. She weighed 14 pounds, if you can believe. And, and now Midnight weighs 6 pounds. Um, when it happened, she suddenly started yowling, losing weight. She was unhappy, nervous. I went to the vet, and he diagnosed hyperthyroid disease. And he told me that when he went to vet school, they never saw a case, and he thought he might never see a case in his whole career. And now his practice here in California sees a case almost every day, and he thought it was a chemical. And I thought, a chemical? This toxic flame retardant from our furniture is known to cause thyroid problems in ri mice, rats, frogs, and kestrels. And fire retardant chemical workers have more thyroid problems. This must be what's causing Midnight's problem. And I told my vet, he looked in the literature, found a study in Illinois, and we sent off a sample of Midnight's blood, a sample of my dust, to see what was in it. And a few days later, I got a call from Illinois saying, you have the highest level of toxic flame retardant in your dust and in your cat that we've ever seen. My God. Can you imagine how I felt? Because I knew what that meant. I knew how bad those chemicals were. And I have to say, I was in denial because I didn't have much in the way of carpeting or electronics or draperies. All I had was three pieces of stuffed furniture that I'd bought in the 80s. And I couldn't believe it was full of toxic fire retardants. So I went and I borrowed an XRF gun. In fact, this very gun that's been used to find lead in kids' toys. This gun, it costs $40,000. It's amazing, though. It can measure very low levels of metals, like lead, and it can measure the bromine in toxic fire retardants. So I took my couch cushions. This is the very cushion. And it's in my garage now. I wouldn't have it in my house, but I'm saving it for science. I measured the level of bromine in this cushion, and it was 6% bromine. That means 6% toxic fire retardant in my house. And it was the same level was in my dust, and the same thing is in my cat. So why did we have such a high level? Why did my house have the highest level that this vet in Illinois had ever seen? And you can see the answer on this PowerPoint. This is levels of toxic fire retardant in dust from various places. And if you look at Germany and the United Kingdom, there's virtually none. Now you look at Massachusetts, Georgia, D.C., Canada, Massachusetts, there's a low level. And you look at California. We have the most. And that's the level that's in midnight in my desk. We had a high level for California. And the reason that we in California have such a high level of toxic fire retardants is we are the only state that has a flammability requirement for our furniture. So furniture in California, the foam has to resist a 12-second exposure to an open flame. And the way you do this is you make your furniture 6% flame retardant. And unfortunately, there's no requirement for any health or any safety information on the flame retardants that go into our furniture. Now, does this make us in California safer for fi from fires? Well, maybe it does. But it doesn't do it enough that it shows up in any fire statistics. So if you look at the fire statistics over the two decades that we have had these toxic fire retardants in our furniture, we have done no better in improving fire safety than any other state. So I would say that we need data that chemicals like this do make a difference in helping our safety. And when we need fire retardant chemicals, we need to know what they are and we need to know they're safe. So what do you do with furniture like this? Well, aside from saving a few cushions for, for science, I sent my furniture to the landfill. and. Um, I thought long and hard about doing that because, of course, the dump is not the end of the story. The chemicals from our couch leach out, and we find them in sewage, we find them in soil and in air, and these very same chemicals that came mostly from furniture in California are now in the food supply all over the world. 
And so they end up in our bodies and our kids, both from the dust and from our food. And the people who are the most vulnerable to these sorts of toxic chemicals are children and pregnant women. Um, and my friend Mary, who founded Moms Making Our Milk Safe, is going to talk to you next because the health of our children and even our great-great-grandchildren can be impacted by the toxic chemicals that go from our furniture into our bodies. But remember, this is an optimistic story. I think we can solve this problem. It just takes political will to demand that these chemicals, with no testing and no information on their health, that they not be put in our furniture and our consumer products. Well, I'm a mountain climber, and I feel like I'm on my life's most important and perhaps perilous expedition. But I've got a fantastic team, like my good friend Mary Broom from Moms Making Our Milk Safe, and my good friend Joan Blades from Moms Rising and Move On. And we're all together with lots of scientists, doctors, and great folks. We hope some of you will join our team. And together, we can have political will and demand information. We need to know that the chemicals in our consumer products, in our couches, our TVs, our computers are safe. And if they're not safe, they do not come into our homes. So please join our expedition, and we can together reach the summit of a healthier, safer world for us all. Arlene came over to my house and measured my couch. And I, it's a couch from my grandmother. I had it recovered about six years ago. When Arlene told me that my furniture had flame retardant in it, I couldn't believe it. I mean, these are like been around my house for you know the last 10 years. And then I got pissed off because what in the heck is flame retardant doing in my couch? I don't smoke. Nobody smokes in my house. When Mom's Rising members heard about this, they got right on board there. And it's really time for everybody to understand that we've got chemicals in our homes unnecessarily, simply because it's good for a few chemical companies. And they're very good at marketing. It just isn't right.